Hello everybody and welcome to a video explaining every single artifact in Risk of Rain 2. First things first, if you're looking for a guide to unlock the artifacts, check out this two minute video I have covering everything you will need to know. Second, I'll leave a link in the description to the wiki for an easy to follow layout of their effects and their unlock code, so check that out and refer back to it whenever you need to. Here in the video I'll be explaining exactly what each artifact does, as their descriptions don't always tell the full story. The background footage is of me playing with literally all artifacts on simultaneously. This is the new challenge, by the way, Monsoon, all artifacts on or Mayo for short. And you can see the effects of each artifact, save for one in the footage, so keep an eye out. Also twitch.tv slash baby. First up, we have the Artifact of Chaos, which enables friendly fire for both you and monsters. Pretty self-explanatory. Think of it as you can take damage from anything. However, this does not mean things like your ceremonial daggers, turrets, if you're playing the engineer, etc., will seek you out and kill you, but rather if you are in their line of fire, you will take damage. Be wary of your gasoline and will the wisp radius because you can definitely get careless and walk into your own on kill death chain. Next up is probably everybody's favorite artifact, Command. It essentially removes the RNG component of looting entirely. When an item drops, no matter if it's purchased from a multi shop, from a chest on the ground, at the Lunar Bazaar, etc., it does not matter. That item will instead turn into a little box of the same rarity. Interacting with the box will let you choose from a single item of anything in the same rarity and category of the original item. So if you purchase an equipment barrel, you will only be able to choose from regular equipment and not any lunar. Same thing for the boss items. If you get a boss item outside of the gold portal, you will only be able to choose from the regular boss items and not Aurelia Knight's Halkion Seed. Overall though, command is insanely fun to use, but also insanely broken. Artifact of Death is a multiplayer only effect. If anyone on your team dies, everyone goes down with them. I'm going down with the ship captain this only affects players and not something silly like your engineer turrets or your beetle guards artifact of dissonance just enables every monster to spawn on every stage which bypasses the usual restrictions get ready for some elder lemurians and bison on stage one because oh boy it's pretty fun artifact of enigma gives you a random equipment when you spawn both regular and lunar equipments are available and after every activation your equipment will simply turn into another random one pretty easy to understand artifact of evolution gives them items between stages. This function is similar to the void fields, where after every couple cells, the monsters will gain a set of items. This one can get very dangerous very quickly, so be careful. And here's another dangerous one, the artifact of frailty, which doubles your fall damage and makes it lethal. Yep, jumping off a stage means you are donezo. Note that the loader is immune to this due to her passive preventing fall damage entirely, and if you have something that resets your vertical momentum, like a hopu feather or an ability like Huntress's Blink, this will heavily diminish your fall damage in any situation and and definitely save your life. Most people's favorite artifact is Command. Well, mine is Glass. 500% increased damage, but with the caveat of only 10% of your usual health. There are a couple things to cover here. First, it has a hidden effect. It disables your one-shot protection entirely. Yes, you heard that right. You will be sitting at 10% of your usual HP permanently and have no protection from a one shot, zero. Yes, that means everything can and will kill you. But the cool part is that the 500% increased damage is applied to your base amount and is separate from other sources. So grabbing even a single shaped glass bumps up your damage to 10 times the usual amount. Grab two shaped glass and that's a freaking 20 times damage increase. Also a final note that the cut to your HP is applied via the curse status effect, which is the same as shaped glass. So any source of max HP you gain will be cut. Infusions grant 0.1 HP per kill up to 10 additional HP total and not the full 100. The artifact of honor makes every enemy spawn as an elite. Unfortunately, they do not grant increased gold as you may have expected. This means the monster spawns are strictly harder, save for if you get a butt ton of guillotines. Artifact of kin makes each stage's monsters the same. So all imps, all bison, all lemurians, etc. And when it means the same, it means the same. This is not like a family event where you can get a wisp event and have lesser and greater wisps and the grove tender as spawns. If you get lesser wisps, you will only have lesser wisps, even as the boss. The artifact of metamorphosis is the get good artifact. Every stage you reach, your survivor is randomly switched, meaning you have to be comfortable at the very least on all survivors if you want a good run. Now, 
Now, you do get your current loadout for each survivor, so at least their skills aren't randomized. That would be pretty bad. Artifact of Sacrifice is also pretty cool. It makes enemies drop items on kill, but you will not get any regular loot to spawn. Now, this doesn't mean you won't get any interactables. You'll still go see blood shrines, gold shrines for the gold portal, drones, etc. Just not any chests or multi shops. Note that the guaranteed legendary chest on Abyssal Depths bypasses this artifact. So if you get Abyssal, grab yourself a red item. The drop rate per kill is very low early on. You'll probably get one item every two minutes or so in the first couple stages. But as time goes on, it looks like the drop rate goes up and not just from more enemies spawning. The percent chance on kill feels like it goes up. I'll have to do some more testing to confirm this though. The Artifact of Soul makes enemies spawn a lesser wisp when they die. So far, I've only seen one wisp spawn per enemy killed, but this amount very well may increase as time goes on. If you know otherwise, let me know in the comments. Artifact of Spite makes enemies release bouncy, spiky, explodey balls on death. Their explosion radius is quite small and is pretty easy to dodge, so as long as you keep your distance, you should be okay. Artifact of Swarms makes enemies spawn in groups of two, but their HP is halved. Note that if paired with Sacrifice, giving every enemy a chance to drop an item, you will not get more items with Swarms, as I guess the second spawn is a clone of the first or something. Finally, the Artifact of Vengeance. Jeez, this one is powerful. Every 10 minutes, an exact copy of yourself will spawn in and you will have to kill them. It has all of your items and the AI is actually pretty dang competent, so be warned. Always look at your in-game timer with this one on and be ready as soon as it hits the 10 minute interval. And that does it with each and every artifact's effects. What are your thoughts? Did Hopu Games go above and beyond your expectations? Which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. You can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash woollygaming and consider joining our Discord server as well. Thank you for watching and let the Mayo Challenge commence!